हेलो एवरी वन आई होप यू लाइक द वीडियोज सो प्लीज सब्सक्राइब द चैनल एंड स्टे ट्यून फॉर मोर वीडियोज सो टूडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट स्पेरिकल टेक्नोमेट्री फर्स्ट वील डिस्कस हाउ स्पेरिकल टेक्नोमेट्री इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम प्लेन टेक्नोमेट्री एंड वेयर वी यूज प्लेन टेक्नोमेट्री एंड वेयर वी यूज स्पेरिकल टेक्नोमेट्री सो प्लेन टेक्नोमेट्री इज एक्चुअली अप्लाइड फॉर प्लेन राइट एंगल ट्राइंगल्स प्लेन ट्राइंगल्स मीन्स द ट्राइंगल्स हैविंग साइड्स मेड अप ऑफ थ्री स्ट्रेट लाइन्स okay uh, like this so these are uh, this type of triangles these are known as plane triangles and right angle triangle means a triangle having one angle 90 degree so this is a plane right angle triangle this is a plane right angle triangle and for trigonometry we will assume uh, any one side or uh, any one angle from these two as theta so assuming this angle as theta now we know that the side opposite to the 90 degree is known as hypotenuse okay and the side adjacent to theta or the assumed angle is base is known as base and the side opposite to the assumed angle theta is known as perpendicular so after this uh, we know that there are six trigonometric ratios trigonometric ratios are as follows sin theta cos theta tan theta cosec theta sec theta and cot theta now sin theta is perpendicular upon hypotenuse cos theta is base upon hypotenuse tan theta is perpendicular upon base cosec theta is cosec theta is actually a inverse of sin theta okay so it is hypotenuse upon perpendicular then sec theta is inverse of cos theta so it is a hypotenuse upon base and cot theta cot theta is actually inverse of tan theta So it is base upon perpendicular. So, and after this, we also know the values of trigonometric ratios on different angles from zero to three sixty degree. They are like from uh, from zero 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 degree to ninety degree. All the values of trigonometric ratio. Sorry, all for all the trigonometric ratios, the values from zero to zero zero degree to ninety degree are positive. then uh, from uh, 90 degree to 180 degree the value of sin and therefore for cosec is positive and all the other are others are negative then from 180 degree to 270 degree value of tan and therefore of cot are positive and all the other values from 180 degree all the values of all the other trigonometric ratios From 180 degree to 270 degree are negative. And similarly, from 270 to 360 degree, the values of cos and therefore sec is positive, and all the other are others are negative. Uh, you can remember this as uh, add sugar to coffee. Okay, A for add. A is used for all, where all the values, all the values are positive. Okay, all the ratios are positive. Sugar, S for sugar. S is used for sine. So in this uh, in this quadrant, the value of sine and cosec is positive. Others are negative. T for two. Okay, and T is used for tan. So value of tan and cot is positive in this quadrant. Others are negative. And C for coffee. C is used for cos. So cos and sec are positive in this quadrant. Others are negative so you can remember it like add sugar to coffee clockwise okay so we are actually well known to these terms and to these things because we are we were using this till class 12th but here for the calculation of uh, navigation we use plane trigonometry in mercator sailing and plane sailing now we will discuss about spherical trigonometry so spherical trigonometry is applied on spherical triangles and spherical triangles are different from plane triangles because the side of spherical triangles are not straight line 
but they are actually curved lines and they are the arc of great circles so what is great circle great circle is actually an important term in spherical trigonometry great circle is a circle on the surface of the sphere whose plane passes through the center of that sphere okay uh, for example we have a sphere here and this is the center of sphere and uh, we draw a circle on the circle uh, on the surface of sphere like this so you can see that the plane of this circle passes through the center of the sphere okay so this type of circles are known as great circle see if i draw a circle on this part of the sphere on the surface then you can see that the uh, its plane is not passing through it to the center of that sphere similarly if i draw a circle on this part of the sphere then also the plane is not passing to the center of the of this sphere so the circle on the sur on the surface of sphere whose plane passes through the center of that sphere okay this type of circles whose plane is passing through the center of that sphere are known as great circles okay these are known as great circles this is a great circle okay now now we will talk about properties of great circles so first is a great circle divides a sphere into two identical hemispheres okay for example this uh, this great circle also this is dividing the circle into two identical hemispheres or we can also assume uh, a great circle like this uh this is the center of the sphere and this is a great circle on the surface of sphere as its plane is passing through the center so we can see that if we will cut the sphere along the along this great circle then we will get two identical hemispheres so a great circle uh divides the sphere into two identical hemispheres next property is the radius of the great circle uh is equal to the radius of that sphere because the circumference of that great circle is equal to the circumference of sphere now the third property third property actually says that uh, uh, at any given point on the surface of a sphere any number of great circles can pass through it for example see if uh, we have a sphere and uh, and Uh, this is the center of the sphere and we have a point here then any number of great circles can pass through this point for example here you can see uh, any number of uh, this is a first this is a great circle we can draw one more great circle like this so this is also a great circle so any number of great circles can pass through this given point okay and uh, if this circles are passing through this given point then they will also pass through the point which will be diametrically opposite to this uh, this okay on the surface of sphere so if you are having a point here then a point diametrically opposite to it will be somewhere here on that surface of the sphere on the other surface so you can see that the great circle is passing through that point also so this state, uh, this property says that uh, at any given point on the surface of sphere any number of great circles can pass through it and the great circle passing through a point will also pass through the point which is diametrically opposite to that point on the surface of sphere now next property is says that uh, if we are having two uh, given points on a surface of sphere for example on the surface of uh, this sphere with this center we are having two given points okay these are two given points then only one great circle can pass through this uh, two points okay only one great circle can pass through these two points okay you can see uh, no other great circle will be there which will pass from both of these points for example if we draw a circle through this point great circle through this point then it will not pass through this point because these are on the same side of the sphere but if the if that two points are diametrically opposite to each other then any number of great circles can pass through it 
So these were some properties of grid circles. Next is small circles. Small circles. Uh, uh, small circle is a circle or the surface of sphere whose plane does not passes through the center of that sphere. See, for example, on this sphere, on this sphere, this is the center. So if I draw a circle here, okay, then its surface does not pass through the center of sphere or if I draw a circle here, then its surface does not pass through the center of sphere, okay, or uh, this sphere, this circle. So these are known as, so these circles uh, whose surface, uh, whose plane does not pass through the center of sphere are known as small circles. The radius of a small circle is actually less or uh, is less than the radius of sphere. Now we will discuss about spherical triangle. Uh, spherical triangle is a triangle or the surface of sphere formed by the intersection of three great circles. For example, this is uh, this is a sphere. So on its surface, uh, these three great circles, when they intersect, uh, they form this spherical triangle. Okay, this is the spherical triangle. Okay, formed by the intersection of three great circles. This is the spherical triangle. Okay, we will take it out from the uh, from the sphere. So uh, it is like this. Okay, named as A, B, and C. As I told you earlier, that the sides of a spherical triangle uh, of a spherical triangle is not a straight line as a plane triangle. They are actually curves or arcs, arcs of a great circle. Okay. So one more thing that if this vertex is named as A. Then side opposite to this vertex will be named as small a. Similarly, this vertex is named as capital B. So side opposite to this vertex will be named as small b. And this vertex is named as capital C. So side opposite to this vertex will be named as small c. This is so because we have to differentiate the letters which are representing sides and representing angles. So this is, uh, this is what a spherical triangle. Is, okay, it is a triangle formed on the surface of the sphere by the intersection of three great circles. Now we will discuss some properties of spherical triangle. So first is the magnitude of the side of a spherical triangle is the angle measured uh, measured by it at the center of the sphere. Okay, so it means that uh, uh, in a spherical triangle, see, uh, this is a spherical triangle. So the angle measured at the center from this sides, from this side, okay, from the end of this side, this is known as the magnitude of that, uh, magnitude of that side and it is expressed in degrees and minutes. Okay, next is the maximum value of a side of a spherical triangle is 180 degree and the maximum value of an angle of the spherical triangle is 180 degree. Next is the sum of the uh, three sides of a spherical triangle is always less than 360 degree. Next is the sum of three angles of a spherical triangle is any value between 180 degree to 540 degree. So here you can see uh, it is different from plane triangle. In plane triangle we know according to the angle sum property of triangle sum of any three sides was equal to 180 degree exactly equal to 180 degree. But here you can see that the sum of three sides is any value between 180 degree to 540 degree. So this is different from plane triangle. So this is a different property of a spherical triangle with compared to plane triangle. The next is the sum of any two sides of a spherical triangle is greater than the third. So this is as same as plane triangle in plane triangle also the sum of any two sides is greater than the third side. Next is the greater side has a greater angle opposite to it. It is also as same as uh, as same as a plane triangle. Next is if two sides of a spherical triangle are equal the angles opposite to the uh, opposite to them are also equal to each other. This is also as same as we have the property in isosceles triangle where the two sides are equal and angles opposite to them are also equal. So this property is as same as uh, plane triangle. Now uh, apart from this we have some more few points for a spherical triangle like uh, if uh, in a spherical triangle any one angle is 90 degree then that spherical triangle is known as right angled spherical triangle. Similarly, if a side is uh, 90 degree, 
okay in a spherical triangle if a side is 90 degree then that spherical triangle is known as quadrantal spherical triangle and if a spherical triangle is neither a right angle triangle nor a uh, nor a quadrantal uh, triangle then that is known as oblique spherical triangle okay if a, if i repeat that if a spherical triangle is not a right angle spherical triangle nor a quadrantal spherical triangle then that spherical triangle is known as oblique spherical triangle now we are going to discuss symmetrical spherical triangles so two triangles can be said that they are symmetrically equal if each of the six elements of a spherical triangle is equal to the each of the six elements of the other spherical triangles the six elements are three sides and three angles so if three sides and three angles of this spherical triangle are equal to the three sides and three angles of this spherical triangle then we can say that these two spherical triangles are equal there are some criteria by which we can prove that they are symmetrically equal first is when the three sides of this spherical first spherical triangle is it correspondingly equal to the uh, three sides of the uh, correspondingly equal to the three sides of the other spherical triangle then we can say that just yes, these two triangles are symmetrically equal another point is when two sides and angle included between them is correspondingly equal to the two sides and angle included between them of the uh, other spherical triangle then these two spherical triangles are known as symmetrically equal similarly if the three angles of a uh, spherical triangle is correspondingly equal to three angles of the other spherical triangle then also we can say that yes these two spherical triangles are correspondingly equal asymmetrically equal sorry and if two angles and included side of a spherical triangle is correspondingly equal to the two angles and included side of the other spherical triangle then also we can say that these two spherical triangles are symmetrically equal to each other now i hope you can think that Uh, the criteria of proving them symmetrically equal is as same as congruency uh, criteria of plane triangle so can we say that these two spherical triangles are also congruent no we cannot say that they say that these two triangles are congruent because a spherical triangle lie on a sphere and uh, therefore they are in th they are three dimensional so we cannot say that these uh, two spherical triangles are uh, congruent but they we can say that they are congruent if they uh, they both superimpose on one another so in this video we have discussed about the introduction of spherical triangle in the next video we will discuss cosine rule and solve some numericals based on it so i hope you will like the video so please click the like button share the video and subscribe the channel thank you so much